Hey everyone, Kevin here, and thanks for watching a video in our Bottom Line series where we focus on uh, uh, custom trucks all the time. And you may notice that I have a car in, uh, behind me, actually. And um, well, I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison for this video of air ride versus hydraulics. And uh, my truck has airbags, and um, you know, I wanted to take you know a, a lowrider and just see you know what the difference is between these things. You know, and and it's not like. Um, Hydraulics are only exclusive to low riders. You can put them on a truck, uh, but I do have to like throw some shade out there to, to the mini truckers and stuff because I tried to find another truck uh, for this video uh, that we can actually do an apples to apples comparison, but I couldn't find any. So, you know, I got an actual low rider just to see, you know, uh, you know, the differences and it's kind of where things came from. But uh, anyways, I have a special guest with me today, and he's actually an old coworker uh, from back in the day. I used to work at Sport Truck Magazine, and uh, he worked at Lowrider Magazine, and now he does his own thing called Lowrider Today. But uh, we have Saul Vargas here today. But uh, Saul, what kind of a uh, car is this? This is a 1970 uh, Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And this thing's all juiced up, everything, right? So you can, you know, take it out and play with the switches and all that, right? Yes, sir. It's a full frame off. You know, it's made. It's we call it kind of like a like a bar hopper. It's made a uh, to go um, to ride in the streets, not it's definitely not a a comfortable ride on the freeway, if that makes any sense. So I'm pretty excited to have this lowrider for a comparison in this video. As I grew up in the suburbs of LA during the 90s, when all this stuff was going on, when all this stuff was really happening, um, you see lowriders in rap videos, all that during the um, back in the day and everything. So it's pretty cool to see this. Uh, but to go into some of the history in you know where lower trucks um got everything from it really it was from lowriders and where these guys got it from was that you know uh or at least hydraulic suspensions was they wanted to go lower and lower and lower and they found out that if they used an adjustable system they could go low they could cruise low and then they could raise up their vehicles you know to uh have a little fun or get over bumps or anything like that but um i know there's there's a bit of history in, in that and then um you know it evolved with trucks guys um figured that you know they, they could use airbags and get a get a smooth ride out of them and everything but uh, I want to kind of look at the systems and everything and Saul can kind of show us here um, what exactly do we have here right here this is like a, a modern version of a gravity fed pump which was uh, similar to, it's basically similar to a, an old pesco setup and um, the old pesco setup was all aircraft that came from the airplanes from the landing gear from the b-52s yeah, so it's all like uh, adaptation of like other things going into a vehicle and making something work, right? Yes, it's it's the original uh, uh, car friendly recycled parts and <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, and get your suspension <laughs> to go up and down. Yeah, so I mean, you can buy new stuff now, and that goes along with trucks and air ride and all that stuff. Uh, but back in the day, it was like use what you got or, or what you can find, you know. So. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool to see where these things came from. But um, yeah, so what exactly are these components here? So basically, basically you have an oil reservoir where the oil comes through here. Um, it feeds the hydraulic pump here. It sucks out the oil and then it pushes it out through these two shafts into the cylinder of the car. And then it just returns through, it returns through these valves back into, the, back into your tank. Which is, that's pretty cool um, looking at a comparison between these two because uh, hydraulics have a, a closed system. So that means that the fluid um, goes to your cylinders and then when it's dumped out of the cylinders, it goes back into the system. So it replenishes itself. I think the only um, difference there or, or thing that's depleted there is batteries or uh, you know power because it's using power all the time. You know, with an air system, uh, we have air that's going into our airbag and then once it, you know, once we lay out a truck, the air gets depleted out and it's gone, it's out of the system. We have to use compressors um, to refill the tanks, our reservoir, uh, so that we can get the truck back up. So uh, that's one thing I do like about uh, hydraulics is it is enclosed, uh, but you do have to run batteries, right? You have to uh, run a few more batteries just to make sure you have the juice. Yes, you, you know, minimum if you're running two batteries in the car for the hydraulic system. You can, uh, the average guy is running four to six batteries on a car, they're not, you know they're not hopping cars like they were back in the 90s uh, it's costing more money just uh it's costing more money to put one together so they don't want to destroy the cars yeah exactly but um i mean what about all the rest of the components i mean you know is it heavier you know I mean, there's a lot that has to go in still you know the airbag the airbags and hydraulics when you start off you're you're within a couple within a couple of pounds of each other you know at the end of the day if you, if you include the bridge on a 
the bridge on a truck to get the back lower yeah the versus, some, for the versus actual... some of the stress points in the battery racks your weight's about it's very very close it's pretty uh close to each other yeah and i think you mentioned that um you also have to reinforce some of the frame stuff when you when you have hydraulics here you know you're flexing that vehicle you want to make sure it's rigid so when we compare both of these systems and weight there's no savings either or it's pretty much the same you're adding a bunch of components to your vehicle uh it, it's not like you know we're looking for weight weight reduction we're racing or anything like that so you're gonna have some added weight in there it's probably about like a person or something like that you know a couple hundred pounds um so like pretty much adding that it's not gonna add too much stress or anything like that so i'll talk about you know adaptation of these uh components uh, to uh, lowriders back in the day, but I think he's got some examples here of where these things actually came from or what they look like actually. So what is this? So this is a, an oxygen tank. This was an oxygen tank. This is what uh, somebody on in a B-52 back in World War II would have in his plane. And this was his lifeline. So it would have oxygen in here and he'd have it strapped to um, like a backpack. And this is what he would, would, you know, this was his life. This is his oxygen up on, you know, up that high. So now at the end of the day, these only had so much life. So they wound up at a surplus, at a military surplus. Okay. So this is where the hydraulics basically evolved. The guys were like, oh, um, you know, how do we get the suspension to go? So they're using rams off of a, rams off of a plane, off of a landing gear or, any mechanical that that they had and so what i mean this is the this is the reservoir for the the fluid itself this oxygen tank became the res the reservoir for the fluid oh gotcha they fi they figured hey well we will do basically what this is doing so they you know they would weld a bung in here to fill it and then this would be the return and they would put a, a bung to feed the oil on a, the oil to the cylinder oh wow now what about some of the other components um were there other uh, other things taken from planes as well? There's several things. Uh, there's several things that came from them. Like these right here would be these are reproductions of the of the landing of part of the landing gear. Uh, they would run fluid through it, return fluid through it, and if the plane were stuck on a plane or stuck up in the air, you know this is this is what it would have looked like on a plane. Oh, that's super cool. So if the gear if the gear were to get stuck, they'd be like, hey boss, it's stuck. And then that just released the pressure manually. Gotcha. So, and then back in the day, it was like adapting this to your vehicle and everything. So, but I imagine, you know, it's like, I don't know, you know, some of these guys are old school. So that's kind of cool to put that in a, in a newer build and everything, right? Yes, it's, uh, it's funny because some of these valves right now, uh, they're going up to two thousand dollars for a valve. Oh, geez. You know, from this version, from an ADEX to one of these uh, Langley Corp ones, it's it's just uh, you know, they're just skyrocketed. Yeah, that, and that's pretty cool. You know, seeing that and differences between you know lowriders and trucks and trucks are uh, you know guy our truck fans are, are pretty nostalgic about you know some of the parts and, and trying to use a lot of older parts and that even comes into like hot rods um, and some of these guys they they only use old parts on, on vehicles and everything so it's pretty cool to see that difference. So as we talk about you know these two suspension systems, uh, you can use either one in a truck. And, uh, you know, so you guys might be wondering, what's the cost difference? So uh, I, I know airbags, you know, it could be about three, 4,000 to get uh, something installed with and parts and everything, which is on the very, very low end. Uh, you know, you can go, the sky's kind of the limit, you know, and you don't want to cheap out on, on your parts. You want to make sure they last and everything. So, but what is the, uh, the cost for adding like hydraulics to a vehicle? Uh, hydraulics, a basic kit starting at about $1,800 now. Um... So that would just be the, the basic kit, not including batteries. And then, so like an install, like, you know, three, 4,000, probably about the same thing, right? Yeah, the, the installs, you know, you can get some systems, uh, turnkey install for 3,000, between three and 3,500. Yeah, so there really is, is no difference there in the price. So when it comes to maintenance on these uh, two systems, I know that Air Ride, it has a lot of maintenance with it. You know, you've got your suspension components you got to maintain and stuff. You got to make sure your alignment is right. Otherwise, you're going to have tire uh, replacements you got to do, uneven wear and everything. But uh, airbags themselves are consumables. They got to replace, uh, be replaced around 10 years or so. And not just because, you know, it, it, 
even if you don't use your vehicle that much, you're going to want to replace them because over time uh, they can form cracks and cause a, a failure and uh, you don't want that when you're driving on the road. So it's just a, a good idea to replace them every 10 years. So uh, yeah, like I said, those airbags are consumables, but I can see that hydraulics could last a little bit longer because uh, the cylinders themselves, you know, they come from aircraft or, you know, somebody trying to replicate that. So um, it could probably last longer. Maybe there's a little bit less maintenance. Correct me if I'm wrong. The maintenance on uh, for hydraulics is it's very it's more affordable. Um, ar you have the armatures. If it's the more power you put to them, the more you're gonna the more that they will wear out. But my last set of hydraulics that armatures that I had in my car lasted me 20 years with four batteries. So you know I think I got my 7590 7595 uh, out of them. Nice, nice. Well, yeah. So, hey, uh, point goes to uh, hydraulics and, you know, maintenance. And, uh, you know, over time, I think that a system like that will last you a little bit longer, you know. So, um, hey, think about that when you're considering, you know, what type of system you want to put in, into, into a vehicle. This video was made possible by our friends at Nitto Tire. And I do want to mention that my truck has a set of NT555 G2s. And back in the day, I actually had Nittos on the truck. I had a set of the original 555s uh, when I had 17s, but now I got 20s on the truck and uh, we upgraded to the uh, 555 G2s and I absolutely love these tires. Not only do they look good, but they ride good as well. They've got the silica compound that makes ride uh, the ride absolutely superior to everything else. And we have a lot of builders um, that we showcase here with their trucks and they have Nitto tires as well. And they absolutely love them as well. So. If you're looking for a set of tires for your build, uh, look at what they have to offer. So having airbags on my truck for about uh, two decades, I know that the uh, ride quality is very good. You know, you're riding on air, it's a little bit of a cushion, uh, but you do have to uh, dampen that a bit with shocks because if you don't have shocks, it's gonna bounce like it's on a balloon. Uh, so and the other, other thing I have to worry about is uh, the oversized wheels and them being billet wheels. You know, you have to watch, uh, watch out for potholes and railroad tracks and stuff like that because you could bend a wheel. But I am curious to see how this low rider rides. So uh, Saul, can we go for a ride? Yeah, grab your stuff, let's go. Sweet. So I'm super stoked about riding in this vehicle. Like I said, growing up around these things in the 90s and seeing them all the time, but never getting to ride anyone, you know, I was really missing out. So this is a real treat. <laughs> Gotta get the door open. It's a little bit of a beast. This car is old. So that was super cool riding in this car and it catches a lot of attention on the road. So it's pretty cool cruising around and everything. Uh, the ride was a little bouncy uh, from, you know, just going around in this thing. But I think Saul has to install something called an accumulator, which would make the ride a little bit smoother. So the debate continues um, whether air ride or hydraulics are smoother on a vehicle. And um, if you guys have some experience, experience with that, you know, if you have a hydraulic uh, um, vehicle, uh, and you think it's smoother than airbags? I wanna hear that stuff. I wanna hear your experience. Put that in the uh, comment section below. And we have to give thanks to us all for uh, showing us around, giving us, giving us a ride and everything. That was super cool. So I uh, hope you guys liked that video. If you did, hit that like button. Uh, that really helps us in, in getting more videos out. And uh, also uh, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications as well so you don't miss a single video. And we will catch you next time.